a session about designing hybrid environments for collaborative learning. My name is Uli Weinberg and I'm running the School of Design Thinking here in Potsdam since 13 years. And next to me... My name is Martin Schwemmler. I'm senior researcher here at the IHBI School of Design Thinking. And in the next 30 minutes, we want to give you a quick introduction about our hybrid learning environments and also give you a quick tour into our new spaces. But before we start, Uli, could you give us a quick introduction? Where are we here at the G School and what has happened during the last six months? Yeah, there was actually uh, like you described and uh, the D school in, in general is a highly creative environment uh, up and running since 13 years now. We're offering a two semester program for um, a number of 120 people, 120 students, usually coming from about 70 different disciplines, 60 different universities and 20 different nations. So it's a kind of mini university within the Hasso Plattner Institute here and just focusing on innovative approaches. And uh, we have set up highly interactive spaces here through the last year with special furniture. You look at those tables here, for example. P students are very close to each other. We have uh, places for works, uh, for work sessions. We have places for experimenting, for prototyping. We have lounge areas, all physical. And that was the big challenge to move that whole thing towards a virtual environment. And, once, just from one point to the other, and how to keep that up, how to keep that momentum of collaboration, close collaboration, how to keep up that momentum of creative years in a collaborative mode, with not just looking at words and numbers and exchanging like communication, but actually doing v visualization, doing prototypes and, and this kind of things. And actually, most important for me is how to keep the momentum, how to keep that kind of level of trust, which you can see here coming up in this close collaborative teams, the small teams, how to keep that up in a virtual environment. And how do we do that? I have three reflections uh, based on research, but also based on our own experience. The first is our own experience. The first is people perceive a space in a holistic way. That means they not only look at certain things in the space, so in a physical space, the furniture, the size of the walls, and in a virtual environment, maybe the software or the music, but they perceive all those things together. So we as educators have to make sure to create such a holistic environment where people like to learn. So what, what did we do to transfer this into a virtual environment? On the one hand, we have so-called digital concierge. So these are student assistants responsible for the digital space. So they run Zoom, they prepare breakout rooms, they welcome people, and they are also tech support. And the second thing that I started to experiment with is music. So one of the only things I can do in a virtual environment to influence the atmosphere is playing different kinds of music, supporting the learning experience and atmosphere of the people and of the learners in that space. The second point is, it's not only one space that we have, it's many. So in a physical environment, we have one lecture hall where students and teachers meet at the same time at the same location. Now, this is different in a virtual environment because everybody has his or her own physical environment. So the student in his apartment, uh, the educator in her office, and they have a joint and common virtual environment. And it's important to keep these two different layers of the physical and um, the, uh, the physical environment in mind. So on the one hand, that means we need to prepare our spaces for that hybrid mode of teaching and learning, and we'll show you examples in a second. And the second is to address these things actively as an educator. So for instance, I invite people really to deal with their space during education sessions, which means I invite them to move their positions, to go to another space, maybe when there's a reflection part, to not sit at the desk, but go somewhere else, sit on the couch, to also make use of that physical space during a session that's happening in the hybrid space or in the virtual space. And the third part is people need to feel secure. 
So Uli was talking about trust, and we need this feeling of trust and security between everybody in a learning environment to foster learning, also to, uh, to support that people want to experiment and that they dare things and maybe also fail. So researchers talk about psychological ownership, so people owning the space, and also about territoriality, so that they say, this is my space, this is your space. So how can we create that in a virtual environment? Well, on the one hand, we can, of course, use smaller spaces, which is breakout sessions where people can discuss in a much smaller group size. And the second is to allow people show their space. So introduce them not only by asking, who, you, who are you? but also ask them, where are you? And invite students to show their own environment where they are so that they can tell everybody, look, this is my personal space where I'm currently working in. So how do these things resonate with your experiences, Uli? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, that was actually covering what we experienced through the last semester in a fully virtual way. And uh, it was so interesting to see what, what happened. And it was most of the time it was quite positive. Our, um, our findings were that the, that the students were jumping in that kind of easy going. Um, our coaches were also very fast adapting the whole team here. We were prepared actually, since we were moving into the virtual, we got some like four weeks of time before the semester started to organize ourselves to get our remote collaboration protocol here set together. Um, a tough question is how to deal with our project partners because all our projects are run with external partners and some of them had really tough legal restrictions. They could not use Zoom or they could not use Miro or they were not allowed to do this and that. So we had to find workarounds. And we also found that some of the project partners, they really were eager to come to our place and not just to be in their place. They wanted to meet the students and uh, that was one of the big challenges. And now, now what we have to try is to get this experience, the very positive experiences from the last semester, connected to the highly positive experiences from the last 13 years and build the bridges and get a kind of smooth, seamless environment where we have tables where a part of the team is there, like four people of the six are physically present, but the two remotely present, they should Seamly, seamless connect to the others. And this is a huge challenge. I personally, I haven't seen any environment which no conference room, no, no virtual setting uh, or com combination which really works, where you really have the, the feeling that no, none of the participants feels excluded or too dominant. And that is so crucial for our, for our place and also how to collaborate how to get together a virtual whiteboard with a physical whiteboard. What kind of connectivity do we have? What kind of tools do we have? What kind of tools do we use for this kind of transition? You know, you have physical artifacts, you have virtual artifacts, and you want to combine both and, and how to work, what portion is digital at a physical desk and what portion is real at a virtual participant's place. So that, those, are, those are things we, are, we have to experiment with and you know that will eat up a lot of energy through the next, <laughs> the next month. And uh, we are so lucky. We have students to experiment with, they are open-minded. We have our team, the team is fully open-minded. We have lots of technology around and we have project partners who are now really eager to learn more. So uh, we want to demonstrate a little bit of our hybrid environment, but what does that mean, hybrid? You know, all people are talking about blended learning and hybrid. What do you think, what, what does it mean? Well, the term itself comes from bringing things together, so mixing things, so exactly what you were talking about, those hybrid... ...lots of lines and Zoom call or so, and uh, we, we, are, we are using a notebook, maybe, maybe a, a tablet, or sometimes just even the smartphone. But uh, we did the same thing also with the coaches, uh, but we found out transition, you know, you have physical artifacts, you have virtual artifacts, and you want to combine both and, and how to work, what portion is digital at a physical desk and what portion is real 
at a virtual participant's place. So that, th th those are things we, are, we have to experiment with. And uh, you know that will eat up a lot of energy through the next, <laughs> the next month. And uh, we are so lucky. We have students to experiment with. They are open-minded. We have our team. The team is fully open-minded. We have lots of technology around. And we have project partners who are now really eager to learn more. So uh, we want to demonstrate a little bit of our hybrid environment. But what does that mean, hybrid? You know, all people are talking about blended learning and hybrid. What do you think? What, what does it mean? Well, the term itself comes from bringing things together, so mixing things, so exactly what you were talking about. Um, and basically, we have to answer three questions. First, um, what are the things that we combine? Well, in this case, it's rather easy. It's the physical space and the physical learning experience and the virtual space with the, virtu with, with the virtual learning experience. The interesting question is now, how do we bring those together? So what is the mode of setting those hybrid spaces up? So is it that they happen at the same point of time, which means one student is remote, other students are on campus. That's one way of doing it. An alternative could be that hybrid means, well, one day is a physical, another day is only virtual, so that we have a time separation of virtual and physical spaces. So that's the second question. And the third one now is the who. So who has to be involved? And as you were saying, it's not only about students, it's also about the coaches, the teachers, but it's also about the staff, about the people um, involved in the program design and running the program and about the project partners. And we have to think of all these different kinds of people in order to create. And well, while you were speaking, I thought of a term, well, we need human and user-centered hybrid learning environments. I guess that's the challenge we will have to solve. And I guess now it's really time to look into some of the prototypes that we have been experimenting with and are still experimenting with. Shall we, Uli? Yeah, why don't we start here at our little studio, which actually used to be the office, the normal office of my fabulous colleague, Claudia Nicolai. But now it's a little studio with lots of lights. And so but, uh, let's have a look at it and uh, zoom out. But Uli, why are we here in a studio setting at all? Yeah, that is the question. We are, we, are, we are trying to do the moderation and all kinds of things with Zoom at the first month. And then we found out we need also to be there in, with a couple of people, so with two people or so, still keeping the corona distance. So that's what we are trying to do here, which makes it a little bit more expensive because we really have a little bit more space. But it actually also gives us the opportunity to have physical things here, like our nice time timer, like our furniture, and like a lot of prototyping material, even some post-it notes. And it gave, gave us a way more lively experience. But talking about experience, should we maybe have a look backstage? Absolutely, because it's not just the green thing here at the table. No, there's a lot of technology, which you can't see right now, but it's here. Yeah, and let's have a look at the little details here in our little studio, which we are setting up with all the lights and the control monitor and the cameras you see here, the audio equipment and the mixer here and computers. And, but just be aware that it's, that used to be a completely normal office. And the task was how to get that immediately transformed to a kind of studio setup here. And... Uh, it not, not only needs the two people who are moderating, no, it needs skill set behind. You see Remy working on the controls here. You don't see Vlad right now, he's running the camera. And we all needed a lot of training, didn't we? Absolutely. So you need the technology, but you also need the skills to run such a thing. And of course, the willingness to experiment, well, and sometimes also to fail and then do again. Absolutely. So you all know uh, how to participate in a video conference, in a Zoom call or so, and uh, we, we, are, we are using a notebook, maybe, maybe a, a tablet, or sometimes just even the smartphone. But uh, we did the same thing also with the coaches, uh, but we found out very soon we need a different kind of equipment. And if you look here, uh, that ton of screens Martin setting in front of him, that is how we have set up the coach space right now, Martin, but what is that about? 
Yes, yeah, so welcome to my coaching space. Um, so basically, each of these screens um, has its purpose. Um, so let's start maybe from the right. So this is the computer connected to that screen, um, and this is where the content and where Zoom happens. So basically, here I do see the other participants, I do see the chat, um, and I can interact well with other people co-teaching and also with the participants. This is the main screen. It also has the webcam that I'm using, and this is just where the presentations are or any kind of content that is streamed. Then this one is uh, my most favorite gadget. Um, it's a stream deck um, and I can, well, with one button click, I can mute my microphone in Zoom or I can play music. So I have several playlists that I need for teaching and whenever I have the feeling that I need music, I just hit the button and then that music's gonna start to play. Um, I can control the music with the iPad so that is connected uh, to the other devices so I could choose other songs if I have the feeling now I have to change the music. Um, then back here you see a ring light, so of course um, normal light um, and in particular if well, there's a sunny morning and then a not so sunny afternoon, you need some other light um, to put you like in, in the right atmosphere and, and environment. And this one is really important because that is the output signal. So it's another Zoom account and I'm logged in and I can see what participants see to always double check um, if I'm sharing the right screen for instance. Well, and last but not least, it's also a glass of water because when you're teaching all day with so much technology, you sometimes just should care about yourself. But Martin, there's still a piece of paper on your table. What is that about? That's true. That is the agenda. And I always have one thing not on any screen but printed out. And this is really the backbone to the time structure um, of the things I'm teaching. And I really make notes also with a pen. Um, and I always have that printed in front of me because that gives me the structure for all digital teaching. I'm happy there's still paper around. Me too. Yeah, here behind me you see our workspace where the students usually meet. And that's actually, it became a somehow famous uh, workspace because System 180, uh, the company we are collaboratively uh, designed that furniture 13 years ago, they started to design thinking line and you find the furniture now in several hundred organizations all around the planet and that space is where the five or six people gather, the team gather, so it's really close working together. The whole system is movable, is on wheels, everything is, is really flexible. Basically they gather around the table, they use the whiteboards and they use tons of materials which you see over there. Martin, what is, what is that all? Yeah, you see here a lot of office supplies. So we have pens, we have sticky notes. We'll come to them in a second again. But we also have a lot of prototyping material. So if you look here, um, things that are not only there to be used but that are there to inspire you. So to inspire the teams to just grab material, experiment with and then see what ca happens and what they make out of it. And not to forget, there is another team member lying on the table, which is our time timer, uh, also belonging to our team space. But now we have described everything. What, what happens in here, Uli? And you actually see now, right now, this is nearly illegal what, what we could do. You cannot gather a team here because they're touching things, physically distributing that. So that is why we had to we severely think of changing this. Now we are back in another team space. Well, we still see there is a table that looks familiar. We also see one whiteboard here that also looks kind of familiar, but a lot of things are different because this is now our prototype of a hybrid team space that allows a team to work from here, but that also allows, and this is what that computer and screens are for, to have participants joining the team who are not on campus. Um, and therefore we also have a microphone on the table um, and so these people could then join via Zoom and work with the team, so with Uli and myself who are now here in that space. Yeah, and you see we had to double the number of tables to make it Corona conform um, and uh, you also see that this is highly improvised. This is probably not what we want to have because if you have, let's say, two people over there at that screen, you want to have them closer to the others, four people here, one person here, one person there. And uh, you want to, sh want to have that also maybe closer, that screen, 
And uh, there is not, I think what we have to work on right now is to get this kind of fluid, seamless getting together between the people who are on screen here and the three, four people in the space. We still have whiteboards. We have lots of whiteboards now, which we don't need anymore, actually, at least currently, uh, because we have this setting here with the virtual whiteboard and the physical whiteboard. Um, and the virtual whiteboard is easy accessible uh, by the people here. So we probably the teams are most of the time working on this platform. We still have the time timer. We still <laughs> we we still have the the chairs. Um, and uh, uh, what we are also missing here is proper lighting. Yes, that is the office light here, which we are using. What we are experimenting also with uh, with new lights, um, and that will be um, our next steps to kind of bring also the experiences from the coaching space together with this and studio. What kind of studio setting do you need here? And it should also should always be, and this is the hardest part. It should always be kind of a switch on thing. So it's not that it needs four or five people to do the whole setup, which is the case right now. So it's not easy, just switch it on. And uh, that should be when students are here, they are actually allowed to book that space and we do the prototyping here during the next semester. But then after that, we are pretty sure we have an environment which really helps people to collaborate on a, on a high, on an eye level uh, uh, side uh, easily um, connected with probably more equipment, connected with probably more equipment. What we also uh, want to experiment is with, with is a little robot, a kind of remote controlled video system which allows uh, the participants here not just to be on a screen here statically, but actually move around the space and get closer to some individuals and get a discussion, individual discussion also going on. So that is what we are planning to do. And another question, because you were mentioning the coaches, is where do the coaches work? So are they at home in their home offices? Are they somehow with the teams, so joining the setup? Or is there another coach space where all coaches coaching all teams at the same time are working? So this is another question that is not only about technology, but also about the question of how to find the best well, physical setup for that hybrid space. Well, and having seen now a bit of the present and the future, uh, let's go back to the studio space where we want to have our Q&A session together with you. So we're back to the studio. We hope you enjoyed our little tour. I hope so too. You know, I, we are working quite hard now, and for us, it's it's very clear that there is no way back to a pure physical environment in the future. So it's not just about the next semester; it's uh, it's about the next years, and this is what we are trying to achieve: an, a hybrid environment, which is also which also can help not only learners, but also workers to enhance their activities and at their workplaces. And we do a lot of prototypes. Um, and now we're, we are well, very eager to learn also from you guys, because that was a little bit from our side, but we need more. We need more interesting ideas. So. We are very open for your questions, your discussion, and we will now leave the pre-recorded space and we'll be there um, in a live Q&A session. Feel free to post your questions in the chat so that everybody can read them and then let's have a nice conversation about hybrid learning environments. Thank you. Yep. Oh yeah, so welcome. We are back in our little studio here where the green screen is gone. And you see our last physical whiteboard before the Corona crisis came. So it's a historical document. And, and we got a lot, of, a lot of questions already in the chat. Thank you very much for joining and thank you very much for listening and watching. And, and I think Marty will go through the first 
Good right, so thanks question. for the first question. Um, actually, it's using student dorm rooms as a learning environment, and what came instantly to my mind uh, was Michel Foucault talking about other spaces, um, and also Sloterdijk uh, at a speech opening uh, the new semester at the university saying that basically the university is also such an other space um, which is a bit different from others and so a student dorm using as a learning environment is for sure one of these other spaces and i guess also reality for some students um, because well that's where they have to learn um, and as we said well make that part of it which means encourage them to i don't know do a reflection or a certain task and maybe the bed is the perfect place to go there um, but i guess this is one part of it so every, all these spaces become part of the spatial setup of a learning um, and collaborative environment now and that is um, adding adding to that we are actually looking at our home offices all of our team home offices and try to enhance them try to make them actually be a part of that hybrid environment uh, we we have a lot of prototypes right now running and it's it is quite good but uh, it's, that needs improvement. Um, so there, uh, some of you were saying that is so expensive. They were asking for numbers. For sure, there's the recording of this session will be there. We'll also probably come up with a little shopping list um, if you approach us later. <laughs> so, um, let's go further on through the questions here. Yeah, so maybe since you mentioned it, the price tags on the thing. So in the end, it's not only about all the pricey stuff, but understanding what you need. And I found out for me personally, I need two screens because I can't handle a presentation. So we use Zoom and, uh, and Keynote, and I need to have a screen where the presentation is, and I need to have a screen where the chat is, because when, in particular, when you teach with more than one person or have a digital concierge, you also need a communication channel with your team, um, and I can't have that all on one screen. Um, and then the music thing, of course, is also a bit of private interest. So that was also a private device that I bought, and I found out, hey, that's cool for using it for teaching. So that's 149 euros, by the way. Um, and of course, it doesn't need to be uh, the latest uh, MacBooks or, or whatever. You just need a computer with some connection, maybe not Wi-Fi, but cable. We try that as well because you need a stable connection. Um, and the ring light, I think it's about 100 euros, but I have or one at home, which is, I think, 30 or something. So it's not only about the super expensive things, but however, for sure, a green screen and the setup we have in the studio, yes, that's a bit more expensive, but the one that you saw in the coaching space, um, well, basically it's using what I already had. I didn't buy anything new because, um, well, I started with understanding what do I need. And then um, I looked how that worked and I had the iPad anyway, and I found out, hey, I can use that for for playing music. Um, and so I just added that to my setup. So as we say, you need uh, spaces as an environment uh, for teaching. Also build your own environment of, of tools and skills and technology that you need. Yeah. There is an interesting question from Jens Hoffmann, uh, because he's asking, what is ex what exactly is hybrid here? Uh, how could a group of students fit in this setting? And I think uh, what we didn't explain too much is that the School of Design Thinking is a fully project-based learning environment, which means we don't have that much of le learning or teaching material, which needs to be distributed physically and, and uh, virtually. Now, uh, our focus is how can students collaboratively work on complex ideas and solving complex problems. And that is what, what we are focusing on also here on, in, in that session. Yes, there's a lot of material. Yes, there's software in the back. Yes, there's three platforms we are basically using. Yes, there is the OpenHPI uh, platform, which is up and running since seven or eight years now. And we are using that also in our physical environment as the platform to, uh, to store all the videos and high, high text, um, uh, heavy text things but uh, we're we we are focusing here on the collaboration how to get people together in a virtual and uh, physical environment maybe that one how do you support teachers and students to be able to use the infrastructure um well yes we teach of course our our teachers so at the moment we have our two-day um to coach the coach session and of course technology is now taking a larger portion of it than in in 
semesters uh, earlier. Um, so we experiment and we invite them really to use the technology, so to experiment with breakout rooms, because of course you need to be sure how, to, how they work, because otherwise it puts too much pressure on the whole thing. And of course we also explain to students um, at the beginning, like what are the key features um, and how to use it, because those are the basics, otherwise you won't be able to really participate. And what we encountered also with international students is sometimes, well, we are used to have a stable internet connection, while well, that's not the case everywhere. So also be ready to include students without a camera and who can't see a screen share because uh, their internet connection is rather low. Yeah, actually, to be honest, even at the IT Institute, HBI, we discovered that we were, we were not really equipped with, with enough bandwidth. For uh, so we we had to our technology department they enhanced it through the last uh, month, so that we were able to ha to run um, heavy duty video streams. There's an interesting question uh, from um, Arina Lukova. I hope I pronounced that right. Sounds from England, from Finland. Actually, it's the question. Uh, so they have the experience to have parts of the students at the campus and part of the students could not even come to the campus so they had to had to work remotely and the question was do you think that the online higher education can fully replace physical or physical or hybrid in the nearest future from my perspective uh, we are still in learning environments of the past centuries of the of the last and the previous centuries and still we see lecture halls where we from our perspective would say why are they still there why is it not replaced by an online learning environment uh, i'm pretty sure a lot of what we are doing here in collaboration we need physical presence at least a, a part of it uh, but most of the traditional learning can be replaced by online and I'm pretty sure it can be very efficient. You can access internationally, whatever you like. And uh, for me, from my perspective, there are too many decision makers in universities still trying to provide this traditional equipment. Martin, how do you see that? Well, I would also agree. And um, like what, what thought that came to my mind was like now physical presence is getting more precious, which means when when you have experience that you can't have it, I guess it pushes you into this thinking of, OK, what can I really do with people who are physically there at the same time and at the same place? And what are the, inst the cases when I might not need that? Um, and I guess this is now a, a, well, a push into that direction. And I was personally surprised how well all these things work online, in particular, um, small breakout rooms and discussions we had with, with students. We also used it for a research conference and people were staying, I think, one and a half hours after the conference ended in the breakout rooms just for exchange. Um, so, well, as I said, that was a surprise um, for me because I wouldn't have imagined that. I think we're overdue for two minutes, 50 seconds now. I guess, well, we are still here if you have more questions, um, but those who need to go to the next session also feel free to do so. And please stay in touch with us, um, drop us a line, um, just, yeah, give us ideas, give us more questions. We're glad uh, to keep the conversation going. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining and uh, our profiles are online and we will stay online. Um, thank you very much and we close the session now. Bye-bye.